My next guest is a, um, is a very charming and uh, provocative gentleman. Um, he, uh, whether you agree with his point of view or not on things, uh, he's always extremely interesting to, um, to talk to. I, I don't agree with him on a great many subjects. There are a few that we do agree on. Um, but uh, he certainly is the best in the world at what he does. And uh, Mr. Billy Graham. be with you, Woody, and I'd like to say that there's some things I don't agree with you on. <laughs> I know, but it's a question of which one of us will be converted by the time... <laughs> I, I hope I can convert you to um, agnosticism by the time the show is over. Well, I've had a lot of people try, and uh, the more they try, the firmer I get uh, in my conviction. Can I ask you what your favorite commandment is? Well, uh, uh, right now, with a lot of teenagers, it's to honor thy father and thy mother. Really? That's, that's, my, that's my least favorite commandment. <laughs> well, I have five children and three grandchildren, and um, I believe all of them uh, follow that commandment. I think they honor their father and their mother. Now, that doesn't mean that they always agree with their father and their mother, mm -hmm. but to honor them, to love them, to respect them. I certainly did my parents, and if I didn't, I got it. Did you? I really got it. It's funny. I'm, I'm saving up my money as I get uh, a little uh, successful in show business, and I'm, when I get a little bit older, I'm going to put my parents in a home. <laughs> that, that's very good. I hope it'll be in a home with you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Are there any questions? <laughs> Mr. Graham, I read that you don't believe in premarital sex relations. Is this true? Uh, it's not a matter of what I believe, it's uh, what the Bible teaches. And the Bible teaches that premarital sex relations are wrong. Yeah, that's funny. To, to me, that would be like, uh, you know, like driving a car, you know, getting a driver's license without a learner's permit first. Well, well, well let, let's, uh, let's just, uh, let's just uh, see. Now, you know, we have to have rules to live by. And uh, what we're saying is we're going to play a baseball game without any rules. We're going to play a football game without any rules. We're going to live a life without any moral rules. Well, God has laid down certain rules and said, if you want the best of life and you want complete happiness and fulfillment, live by these rules. And one of those rules is that thou shalt not commit immorality. Ah, but wait a minute. But if you're, say you're dating a girl, right? Well, I, uh, I don't intend to date anyone. No, no, but I mean... <laughs> Let's say, you, you. Okay, say I'm dating a girl, and say I'm going to marry her, right? She's, she's begged me to marry her. This was after a while. Or <laughs> what's even more interesting, I'm forced to marry her, is what happens. And now, don't I want to get some inkling of the territory? Well, uh, but you see, all, most psychologists today and most psychiatrists, I think, would agree with the Bible that there are very serious problems involved God didn't say, thou shalt not commit immorality before marriage in order to keep you from having a good time or having yes, fun. Yes, he did. He said, <laughs> no, he, he said that to protect you, to protect you psychologically, to protect, uh, to protect your body, because today venereal disease is at an all-time high in spite of all of our problems, and illegitimacy is at an all-time high in spite of all of our medical science. Yes. And all of these things, God said, I want to make you happy, I want to help you, and I've given you some rules to live by, and this is the rule. Well, now, let me ask you a question. What if I marry the girl, then, and then if I finally do get to investigate her carnally, and it turns out <laughs> she's an absolute yo-yo? <laughs> well, I don't think that'll happen to you. <laughs> hypothetical question. Yeah, but it happens to guys all the time. Uh, what was the worst sin you ever committed? <laughs> the worst sin that I ever committed? Uh, I had impure thoughts about Art Linkletter. <laughs> Do you remember the worst sin you ever committed? Uh... Every sin is the same in God's sight. I mean, there is no such thing as a worse sin. Oh, really? I, if you wanted to find out which sin was the greatest, uh, I would choose, if I were forced to choose, mm -hmm. I would say idolatry, breaking the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Really, that one bothers you the most? No, that doesn't bother me. That bothers the scriptures. It bothers God. Because all the way God was teaching Israel 
all through the Old Testament that there was one God, only one, that we're to serve and we're to worship. Right, and that doesn't seem to you as, say, an egomaniacal position. On God's part? On God's part. Oh, no, God is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny, when I look in the mirror in the morning, it's hard for me to believe that. <laughs> You know, in God's sight, you are beautiful. And, in, and everyone... <laughs> because, uh, because God loves all of us, and he has the hairs of our head numbered, he sees the sparrow fall, he's interested in every detail of your life. He made you like you are. He made you Woody Allen, and he expects you to live up uh, to a standard that he has made. And if you don't live up to it, then the Bible says you're falling short, and that's where you need God's help for redemption. Question? Would it use marijuana or drugs? Do I use drugs or marijuana? No, I'm I, I have, I'm not. Um, I don't use. I don't smoke or drink. Or that's an interesting because we're probably the same about this. I don't know about you. I, 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 I it's true. I, I advocate the um, the legalization of marijuana, but I don't approve of the use of it. Uh, but do, do you have any vices like that? Uh, yes, I I drink coffee. And uh, I'm told that uh, now that there's going to be a great, a lot of publicity coming out that coffee is bad for you. I don't know, but uh, that's going to be hard for me to give up. You know, I may need your help. That's okay. <laughs> Maybe you can give me some ideas about how to give up coffee. Yes, if you will have faith in me, I will lead you. <laughs> Mr. Green, have you seen any of Woody Allen's plays or movies? And what do you think of them? No, I have not. Uh, I have only read reviews, and uh, I would like to, though. And after meeting Woody, I think if you'll give me a free pass or a ticket, I might. Uh, and uh, uh, if you come to one of my one of my uh, movies or something, I'll go to one of your revival meetings. Well, now that is a deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> report back to this audience on that <laughs> an interesting thing, uh, because uh, uh, I'll let you know my schedule and you let me know yours and uh, we'll do that I'd love it you could probably convert me because I'm a pushover you know what I mean I, I, have, I have no convictions in any direction and if you if you make it appealing enough and you promise me some sort of wonderful afterlife with a white robe and wings I would go for it well I don't promise you a white robe and wings but I I can promise you a very interesting thrilling life yeah, one wing maybe no <laughs> You know, there's a guy in England that's the number one pop idol right now by the name of Cliff Richards. And Cliff Richards said the other day, he said, when I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, he said this was 10,000 times more of a turned on experience than any trip I ever took on LSD. So you've got something in store for you. See, you've experienced some of these other things, but you haven't experienced God yet. And that's the greatest of all experiences, and I'd hate for you to miss it. Oh, I'd hate to miss it if it's there. The question well, is, there. The question is, is it there? You're you coming to I mean? our meeting, you said. Yeah, I can come. I know the meeting will be there, but will God show up? Oh, I believe he will. <laughs> yeah. Woody, do you think that you could ever make a good minister? <laughs> I'd like to answer that. Sure. I think, yes, definitely. You think I have the traits of a minister? I think you do, because you see, some of the greatest ministers of history have been some of the greatest sinners of history. Yeah. You have this terrific mind, you have this ability to communicate, God could use you. Really? That's like getting into the army or something. <laughs> no, it would be a great experience. Yeah, would I have to wear one of those dark coats and oh, a white no, color? Oh, no, no, no. Like you don't like see this? mine, do you? No, you, you, no, that's right, but you dress very conservatively. Well, that was because uh, uh, I was on a previous show early, and this is the way I had to dress on that particular show, and I didn't have time to change before I came over here to the studio. Do you think that I could... I would like to have worn a very loud coat for, Some... for this occasion. Yeah, something casual and <laughs> devil may care if you look Well, this is rather... <laughs> You mean something wild, like a blue coat, or something like that, rather than... <laughs> yes, something really crazy, like a blue coat. <laughs> Thank you for coming here and, uh, and doing this with me, and, and you're always, you know, a treat to talk to, and um, I hope I haven't provoked you or, or 
you know, alienated you in any way. Oh, no, you know, no. Uh, I've enjoyed it very much, and I hope that we can do a repeat sometime. We've had a marvelous audience here and some wonderful questions, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I want to say God bless you. Well, thank you, and the best thank to you. you.